and rising. This is the Verbal Antidote Channel. But no further ado, let's go into the mind of a tyrant. Let's go into the mind of a warmonger, Benjamin Netanyahu. But no further ado, let's do it. Rafa is home to 1.4 million people, many of whom were pushed out of their homes in northern Gaza by Israel's ground operations there. But this place are feeling the same fate again, as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu insists he's pushing forward with plans for an assault on Rafa. This despite pleas from Washington for the whole thing to be called off. I made it clear to the president that we are determined to complete the elimination of these battalions in Rafa, and there is no way to do it other than a ground invasion. Netanyahu's comments come less than a day after Biden cautioned against a ground invasion in a call with the Israeli leader. Washington says such a move would be a mistake and that Israel could achieve its military aims, namely rooting out Hamas operatives, by other means. The White House is set to reiterate those calls in a meeting early next week between U.S. and Israeli officials. Italy's Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni has joined the chorus of opposition. She says military action could have even more catastrophic consequences for civilians. Qatar, a key mediator in ongoing ceasefire talks, fears the operation would also set negotiations back. I believe, of course, and we have said this countless times, that any attack on Rafa would hamper any uh, efforts to get uh, a deal. It would be a humanitarian catastrophe within uh, what is happening right now in Gaza. Uh, I'm talking about around 1.5 million Palestinians crammed into total 10% of uh, Gaza We're already. Despite those warnings, Qatari officials say they are cautiously optimistic following a meeting with Israel's intelligence chief secure a six-week truce. Dr. Bashar Abdel Qadir hasn't stopped working all day. He's doing a 24-hour shift in the accident and emergency department of Al-Aqsa Hospital in Gaza and surviving on a few plates of rice and little else. We've been provided with a few meals, but nutritionally, they are not sufficient. Each meal is shared between two doctors and consists of rice and a small amount of vegetables. No protein. It's not enough for a doctor working these hours. The head of the emergency department is worried about his team's ability to keep going. He says dire food shortages mean staff start their shifts exhausted and famished. We're seeing malnutrition among health workers in the emergency department. Weight loss, pale skin. They can't work like this, especially with so many injuries coming in. They don't have the energy to work for more than two hours. At the hospital's makeshift Even the doctors are available into meals for staff. Canned food has become a staple with little else to eat during more than five months of war. But it's far from being an adequate source of food. We're suffering from nutritional deficiencies. Fruit and vegetables aren't available, so we're not getting any minerals or vitamins. We depend on canned food, but sometimes the price of that goes sky high. Without adequate nutrition, there's a high risk of health workers falling sick. And that's the last thing Gaza's collapsed health system needs. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. The Israeli army says it's killed at least 90 Palestinians during an ongoing raid on Al Shifa Hospital in Gaza City. Explosions and gunfire are shaking areas around the complex. Israeli soldiers raided the Look. hospital on Monday. They say they have interrogated more than 300 people and taken at least 160 back to Israel for further investigation. Gaza's health ministry says the situation inside the hospital is critical and hundreds of displaced civilians, patients and staff are trapped inside. Let's get the latest with Hamdat Sabud, who is in occupied East Jerusalem. So they're killing patients too. Talk to us about the Israeli reactions to this continued raid on our Shifa Hamda. Uh, the death toll there is rising. The Israeli army says that they have arrested 300 Palestinians and at least 90 other Palestinians have been killed in this ongoing raid at Al Shifa Hospital. The Israeli army has released a statement. Hey, uh, I think Israel and America can go to war. 
I think if he invade Rafa, I think President Biden is going to do a strike on Israel. So this is to Ben Netanyahu. You might catch a surprise, buddy. I think America is going to strike Israel. So y'all just be waiting for the surprise. All right. If the UN don't step in, America is going to strike Israel. Mm -hmm. It might be a bold and outrageous statement, but Israel will have hot coals rain down on them from the metal birds, the supersonic metal birds of the USA. Might be a bold or raise a statement. But uh if they attack your aid workers from America, Israel will have high coals running down on a beautiful country. Needing to innocent 
civilian deaths and worsening the already dire humanitarian situation on the ground. Uh, Biden said he also told Netanyahu he wanted to see an immediate ceasefire lasting for several weeks. That's as the latest round of truce talks is getting underway in Qatar. But overall, the readout of Biden and Netanyahu's conversation shows the clear frustration of the American president and also the difference between his administration's um, position and that of Netanyahu, who, who in recent days has said in front of the cameras that Israel will operate in Rafa, will go in there and won't bow to pressure from the international community. Starting February 14, 42.